<laughs> Hello everybody! <laughs> a quick video of a very, very high level overview of yeah, QRI and you know how we choose what to focus on. It's three set of triplets. <laughs> First of all, the three supers. Uh, this is the way in which David Pierce defines transhumanism, which of course is for some people kind of a scary word. It, you know, it, it, it suggests people who really care about, you know, having big muscles and being powerful and, you know, having a strong ego, <laughs> you know, being a transhumanist beyond human or something like that. But no, I mean, I, I, I buy the argument of transhumanism as generalized humanism. Essentially, if you take, you know, humanism <laughs> to its actual consequences, <laughs> it entails uh, things such as, hey, yeah, a little bit more longevity would be better. A little bit more happiness would be better. <laughs> a little bit more intelligence would be better. A lot more of all of those would be even a lot better. So the way David Pierce kind of like, you know, very helpfully describes transhumanism is the pursuit of super intelligence, super longevity, and super happiness. Now, zooming in on super happiness, <laughs> that is what we focus on at QRI. Of course, our theories of consciousness also have enormous bearings on intelligence and maybe longevity to some extent. But, you know, the goal really here is super happiness. So now the three goals, <laughs> how do you achieve super happiness? What would it mean for the world to be super happy? Well, I think there are like three goals or pillars here to focus on. So first of all is actual, you know, super bliss, like ultra meaningful, ultra pleasurable, really wholesome states of consciousness. To study that, we've got to study things like MDMA, jhana meditation, 5-MeO DMT, even epileptic seizures, essentially just looking at the upper extremes of valence and how to generate them in a safe and sustainable way, <laughs> making them universally accessible and useful for everybody. The second goal or pillar is increased baseline. And the reason why this matters so much is because so much productivity is gated by low mood. You know, the difference between being in a 1 out of 10 versus 3 out of 10 in the happiness scale may not be that much in terms of the actual feeling, but it's enormous when it comes to productivity. So if you want to encourage a self-reinforcing system, that essentially pushes in the direction of super happiness, you know, enhanced productivity and enhanced baseline is absolutely paramount. And the third one is, well, maybe the morally most significant, of course, is getting rid of intense suffering. And that is because, as our research shows, essentially pain and pleasure scales are truly logarithmic, meaning that the most intense pains and the most intense pleasures are orders of magnitude more intense and more significant than we can imagine, we can conceptualize. And really, you know, there are some people who care about extreme suffering. Um, but as far as I know, QRI is the only group that is essentially developing this comprehensive kind of plan or manifesto for, hey, these are concrete <laughs> extreme suffering instances that we can tackle and get rid of if we set our mind Right, and we have the resources and the intellectual capital to make them happen. You know, <laughs> on top of the list, it includes things such as essentially getting rid of cluster headaches, which are some of the most painful things anybody can experience. They happen one in a thousand people. They're very common and they're really horrifying. And uh, people who experience them commit suicide at a very high rate. And something like DMT, as weird as that sounds, is actually capable of aborting these uh, very, very unpleasant states very quickly for a very large percentage of people. Obviously, more research is needed here, but I envision that, okay, if somebody, let's say, like Elon Musk or Bill Gates or somebody, you know, really powerful, were to say, you know, the year is 2035 and we will achieve zero cluster headaches across the world, it is damn doable. This is damn doable. You know, it's physically absolutely realizable. It's just a matter of distributing the right material to the right people and changing legislation to make this viable. I think it can happen. 
if <laughs> the only thing I achieve in my life is, you know, slightly increasing the probability of getting rid of cluster headaches. Okay, I think I did a good job. The same I would, you know, think about everybody else. Um, but let's not be satisfied with just that. Let's actually create a comprehensive program to get rid of all of the kinds of intense suffering out there, you know? And yeah, there are pragmatic solutions for preventing things like kidney stones, uh, you know, severe chronic pain, the field of anti-tolerance drugs. There's potential new avenues for reducing um, the tolerance that you experience from painkillers. Anyway, there, we've talked a lot about that at QRI. If you're curious, you know, there's a lot of material to, to, to dig into and a lot of glory for whoever actually makes this happen. Well, so we've got kind of like, okay, the overarching kind of framework, you know, there's three supers, but then focusing on super happiness, we have getting rid of intense suffering, increasing baseline and achieving new heights. So the third triplet I'm going to mention is kind of the method or the way or why we call QRI a full stack memplex. <laughs> because essentially uh, tackling three core fields in such a way that you get synergy between them. Yeah, I know how, how dumb that sounds. The synergy is a very corporate <laughs> term, but, but it can be very real as anybody who combines the right drugs can tell you synergy <laughs> can be very, very real. And I think synergy between these fields is also paramount. So we're talking about, first of all, philosophy, philosophy of mind, taking seriously philosophy of mind. And I think, yeah, there are very meaningful, non-trivial, you know, significant things that can be say, said about uh, philosophy of mind and the publications we're working on. It's essentially pushing in that direction. But also anybody else who really takes seriously, like, you know, valence, you know, the topology of consciousness or, you know, field theories of consciousness, all of that helps. All of that helps. The second field is neuroscience, you know, actual hardcore neuroscience, analyzing, you know, neuroimaging data sets, trying to identify the signatures of positive valence or identifying like leverage points <laughs> for harmonizing the brain, things like that. Um, it's a lot of work in progress. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to say more about that soon. And the third is neurotechnology. I mean, one of the most cool things we've done at QRI is preliminary exploratory research on haptic stimulation is one of those things that you really have to experience to believe. Um, you know, we've had like, yeah, people go through kind of our body vibration, light stimulation and audio prototype and say, Oh my gosh, that was like extremely therapeutic. I resolved a deep trauma, you know, that I hadn't been able to address. It's uh, kind of like similar to psychedelic therapy, but in a completely non-invasive and presumably healthier way. But that's just one example of a lot of other neurotechnologies that are essentially within grasp, <laughs> given the sort of paradigms we're exploring, such as the correspondence between the structure of consciousness and valence, <laughs> or, you know, the, the holistic uh, computational properties of consciousness. There's a lot, a lot to be investigated there. Anyway, this is just very high level overview, right? Like the three core triplets that are kind of guiding principles for where to pay attention to. All right. Well, thank you so much, Infinite Bliss, everybody. <laughs> Till next time.